Hi, this is Chani Nicholas. And this is David Goldberg. <laughs> <laughs> We're coming to you live from New York City, HarperCollins. And I'm going to be signing books. And David... Is going to be talking to you about this <laughs> damn book you read. <laughs> FYI, Chani's new book, You Were Born for This, Astrology for Radical Self-Acceptance, is out. So today, Chani's going to be signing new copies, and we're going to be talking about her journey through this book. We have questions from book owners right here and some questions of my own. So let's get rolling. <laughs> <laughs> yes, David. So I guess this is where we should start. We have a really great question uh, from Alessandro in London that mm. I wanted to know more about. Mm. Alessandro says, Dear Chani, thanks for all your works and words that always resonate with me. I'm excited for your new birth chart tool. Can you give us some preview on how it will be? Oh my God, such yeah. a great question. So I know that you launched on your site the yes. birth chart tool this week. And That's I know good. that the book has a really comprehensive breakdown about how you can discover your birth chart. So I'd yes. love to know, and Alessandro would love to know, like great. how these two things work, how they work together. Love. How to do this. Okay. <clears throat> so in the tool, so you pull up, you, you go to my website, channynicholas.com, and in one of the, in the toolbar up top, it says your chart. You click on that, and it brings you to a page where you put in all of your birth data. And of course, like I say in the book, the most important thing to know is your time of birth. And get as specific as possible with that. Make sure you put in the right AM, PM, et cetera, and especially the right location, obviously the right day and year is very important. Um, put all that in, and you can either cho choose to use whole sign houses or Placidus. We're going to have more house systems as we go on. This is just V1. Um, I use whole sign houses, so if you want to use what I use, use that. If not, you can use Placidus, which is what a lot of other different astrology apps use. Um, and you pull up your chart, and then if you're on your phone, you probably want to expand it a little bit, and you can tap on each planet and it'll show you the aspects that that planet is making. But there's the chart itself, which is, a, I think, a gorgeous tool. Um, I really love the way we designed it. And yeah, then, it's very elegant and clean. You, and you. Yes, sorry for going. <laughs> um, and you can see all the signs around the outer wheel and where you have the most planets, et cetera. But if you keep scrolling down past the chart, it will tell you all the glyphs and the names of the planets that go with it. But then it'll tell you your sun is in Libra in the third house. And, da -da -da -da, and it'll tell you where your moon is, and it'll tell you what your ascendant sign is, and it'll tell you what planet rules your ascendant and where it is and what sign it's in. And then if you keep scrolling down, it'll show you what moon phase you were born under. Hello. Hi. <laughs> and then if you keep scrolling down, you can go through each of your planets and see what sign and what house they're in. So it's all there in the chart, but if you need a little extra assistance, all of it's listed below the chart. If you're scrolling on your phone, you just keep scrolling. If you're on a laptop or what have you, you again, you just keep scrolling, but you'll be, be able to see more of the information. kind of. And if you're someone like me who had to hack illegal German sites to get their chart and had to kind of go through these horrific, poorly constructed charts Where just to get you? some answer. <laughs> Anyways, I did Chani's yesterday. It's gorgeous, Aww. chic, streamlined, simple, saved on yes. my phone. Yes. Ah, so what I want to know, you know, now that we have wait, the wait, book. Wait, hold on. Yeah, sorry. So controlling. then you go, you see all, like, your son is sextile Jupiter. Good for you. And then you can turn to the book. Ah, and you okay. go sun chapter, and then you find, like, sun. And then you're like, oh, sun sextile Jupiter. So it'll tell you, like, read chapter three, whatever, to learn more about your son. But once you've read the basics of your chart, then what a really good thing to do is, is go through the aspects. And mm. so the on on our website, we show you which aspects are to which planets, and then you can just read that in the book. So they really are companion pieces, the book and the chart on the website. Okay. So with the book out, and yes. now that we have this chart, I'm wondering, you know, as an astrologer over the years, through your writing, through the through readings, through your workshops, you've been like, giving us this service. And I'm I'm wondering now that you have the book, now yeah. that anyone can buy it and yeah. kind of access these tools, yeah. if it's given you a chance to do something you haven't been able to do before or provide something you haven't been able to provide before, is there something where in the book where you can be like, here's the book, go figure this out on your own? You know? <laughs> is there like a sense of... Of like re releasing of, the children? Yeah, or, or is there like something the you're are... arming us with maybe? I hope so. I hope that this book is a 
intro into the most important parts of your chart and that you can start to build a relationship of your own mm. with your sun, with the sign, the house, the aspects it makes, with your rising sign, with any planets that are in your first house, with, with the ruler of your ascendant and where it is and what sign it's in because that is so important as we know. What happened when you found out the ruler of your ascendant and where it was? Babe. <laughs> <laughs> Well, and also, you know, my ninth house, Libra Moon. Listen. When you first informed me about it a few years ago, I did not know what you were talking about. Yeah. And now it's almost like there's this doomsday clock towards my destiny. And it's like slapping me but in the in face. But in a good way. In a great okay. way. It's, it's all he's so obvious. He's Saturn ruled, so he's going to say doomsday. Yeah, it's <laughs> in Capricorn. Okay. But uh, yeah, no, I, so I feel a, very armed. Um, I love that because that's what I want. I, like an astrologer can tell you things all day long. And it's very, very important to get your chart read by a professional that you trust, that has a great body of work and a really great understanding of the system. And I think it's if you're interested in astrology, I think it's just as important to connect with your chart on your own. Right. Because you're going to, as an astrologer, I'm going to say something to you and you're going to be like, okay, cool, cool. And I then an hour later, it's gone. Yeah, yeah. But if you have, if you're initiating the relationship with it, then you own it. It's yours and you have agency over it. And then you get to be like, oh, that's how my moon in Libra shows right. up. That's how it's really helpful. Everybody loves me. And that's how it's really a nightmare. I want to please everybody. And then hopefully <laughs> we're more in conversation with you than kind of yeah. coming to you. For, and then you can tell answers. me how it works. Right. I don't want to be the one that tells. Like, I don't know how it really works. I just know what the thing is. And then you tell me how it actually like lives through you and in your life and where it's most useful for you. And then we can have this great dialogue about your own self-discovery. And the doomsday clock. And the doomsday clock. Um, not to give you a whole QVC thing, but okay. we are signing these books and you can buy your own signed copy uh, at premiercollectibles.com slash born for this. Thank you. There should be links here and there. Here and there. Uh, I'll be selling my line of fine jewelry after <laughs> this. Okay. Um, Kristen in Indianapolis, hey girl, she says, other than the internet's obsession with and generalization of sun signs, what's the most frustrating misinformation or misunderstanding about astrology that you come across? So this is really interesting because right now I assume you're interacting with a lot of your readers. So yeah. I am curious if there is a thing that comes up a lot where you're like, okay, like that's not, <laughs> mm, hold on. Is there, um, yeah, are there any misunderstandings that people bring into astrology that you have to parse out? Well, yeah, I, I feel like I hear a lot of people explain things in their chart in ways that I'm like, huh, that's not how I would see that or mm -hmm. that's not the that's not the way in which I think in terms of like it goes beyond sun signs. I think we put so much emphasis on the signs, which are so, so important. But we really want to, I'm really trying to get us to refocus on the planets mm. um, using this book because it's the planets that we're really, they're, they're the actual physical bodies that we are in relationship with through this astrological system. They are in parts of the sky which are governed by signs, which are very important. And those are obviously related to other things like fixed stars. It's a whole other subject. But the planets are the actual in this system, really, the beings or the, the physical manifestations of an energy. And so to be in relationships with planets, I think, is really, um, it's going to be a lot more, it's going to give your chart a lot more depth than just focusing on sign-based understanding of astrology. I When I first, well, in my journey of like refusing to be an astrologer, the, pl <laughs> the planets would start to visit me in my dreams and they would get really insistent and very loud and very even aggressive sometimes. Like Mars or? No, all of them really. Oh, wow. like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Venus was really quite intense. Oh, okay. Yeah, but uh, because I wasn't working with them, they would just like, hound me and hunt me in my dream world until I said yes. And now they really kind of leave me alone in, my, <laughs> in, my, in the astral plane. But um, those dreams really helped me. They would teach me. They'd be like, this is how I work. Mm. And so I think that there's something really important about remembering the quality and the nature of the planets, how they move, how they appear in the sky, 
what they were like when you were born. Were they in the sky? Were they on the horizon? Were they bright? Mm-hmm. Were they dim? What was the what was the nature of the sky? What did it look like the moment you took your first breath? That's the mark of your astrology. <laughs> so your moon was right bright out. In yeah, the sky. right up top. Too. Yeah. So you were it was and you were because you're born right before a full moon. Right, a gibbous moon. That, yes, that's me. That's you. That's Hi. you. <laughs> a lot of expectation, a lot of pressure. <laughs> I know. Born in Israel to a Jewish family. Yeah. Um, (laughs) Um, So, (laughs) no big deal. Um, And so, uh, that's really important that you were born under that big, bright moon that was inching towards fullness. And that mark is on your life, that needing to fulfill something big Mm -hmm. out in the world. You and, can see it just visible in the sky. And it's in my ninth house of publishing. Yeah. And what do you do again? <laughs> Babe, we're here right now. <laughs> Writing? Is that part of what you do? I don't know. Something, <laughs> something like that. <laughs> so I'm curious what this experience of um, just getting to interact with your readers has been like. I know that the tour just mm. started, but yeah. just as the book's been coming out, there's been such this outpouring of love. And mm. I know that you've gotten to start meeting a lot more of your readers. What's it been like? It's been amazing. It's really, I, we joke about this a lot, but I'm like in the recording studio all the time or I'm in my office alone writing. And so I live a pretty isolated work life. Right. In a lot of ways. I have a lot of meetings and all mm-hmm. that, but the bulk of my work is like in a cave <laughs> trying <laughs> to figure out what to say to everybody. Um, and this moment for me, so uh, in so progressions, it's not something I talk about in the book, but it's related. Progressions is a symbolic movement of the planets after we're born. And by progress phase, I'm in a full moon phase. And so mm. that's really about being in relationship and having some kind of full big experience. So this book really is a part of that for me. And it's really, this book has just, changed me in so many ways you heard me complain throughout the entire process <laughs> the fear and loathing and just all the feelings that happen when you put yourself into form like this is for me it was very overwhelming and a little shocking even and um it is now bringing me out into the world in a way that i wouldn't be in without it yeah so i feel like it is really um initiating me into a different thing and it's been so incredible to be to bear witness to what the work has been about for other people because it's like I've been writing at home for years and putting stuff out and recording stuff and not really in the world with it it goes out and it has its own relationship with everyone and then I don't get to see that really I see some of it online but I'm not in person with it and so getting to do like the couple of events that I've done so far has been really, it's incredible. It's really, I'm I'm just so grateful. I'm honestly just so moved every time anybody leaves their house to come see me. (laughs) Oh yeah, we're like climbing over the rafters. I'm, you know, uh, actually I have a question and Jennifer in Seattle has a similar question. Hi Jennifer. She, She asks, what is your favorite thing to help people with? So yeah, I'd like to know in your work, what's your favorite thing that you get to do? And then I'd like to know with this book, what was your favorite part? Or not your favorite part, but what was your favorite thing you got to dive into? My favorite thing about working with people is having that moment where I get to witness your own self recognition. So what Mm. if I will say, oh, well, this planet rules this and it's about this and it's in this part of your chart and get to see that light that goes on for folks that is about, it's really that moment of, oh my God, yeah, that is me. That And it's a, it's a moment of maybe self-acceptance or acknowledgement or real excitement that that is true. Like that we have these deep desires about ourselves and then when a stranger can affirm or confirm that, it feels like a real, I think gift, at least it has for me when I get readings from people when I feel really witnessed. And if that's true, if this system, if this, if the sky, if astrology can witness me like that, then 
my hopes and dreams for myself are actually connected to something bigger than just my ego, right? And I think that's really beautiful. So that's my favorite thing. And with the book, I think my favorite thing was getting to thank people. And um, mm. what's been really great is giving people readings with the book um, and interviews and stuff. And then I can flip to the thing about their chart and read it to them. And, and it being like spot on is really like, oh, cool, <laughs> that works. <laughs> <laughs> you hope things work, you know, like I know this system works. And that's why I wrote the book, because I don't want you to think that astrologers are people that are special in a way. It's like we just we just love this language and we articulate it in our own specific style. But we all have we're all working from the same master copy in a sense. And if you go to 12 different astrologers, you will hear slightly different things, but you'll hear some of the same main structural points because astrology is a system that has its own integrity. And I wanted to write a book to say like, see, it's not me, it's the system. And this this one I think works really well and it has a ton of integrity and depth. And I just wanted to share that with folks. Yeah, it's so interesting because I think like sometimes there's that light bulb moment yeah. and sometimes it takes years. Yeah. Even I saw you speaking on Monday and I remembered uh, I got a reading from you in 2014 yeah. where you said, hey, babe, listen, Chiron is in cancer <laughs> in your sixth house. Like you're going to need to delve into your pain and your work. And you were like, I don't know what she's exactly. talking about. And then because like, you were a baby. Yeah, I was a baby. And five years later, it like hit me on the head. And I was so thankful that I oh, could go back to that. Yeah. But it's just interesting. I kind of forgot about that. Right. And really, the the work that I've seen you do recently, like the most poignant things that you do is being able to go back into your, because Chiron is about the wound, is like you're able to go back in and really open it up in a way that is not self-involved and is actually just really clarifying. And it's so gorgeous to watch you do that so i'm Thank so glad you. you gave me that to i guess what to i remember. what i'm seeing and what i'm excited about for this because you book, have to live long enough to understand exactly. your chart exactly and you can't at 22 you, you'll no. get some of it but you don't you, you just you have to let your life breathe you have to let your chart breathe never think that you understand it fully which i say about 70 times in the book like trust the process of the unfolding of your life right. and your chart at the same time. The most difficult parts of my chart have given me the most. They have made me work the hardest. Mm. They have made me fight the most. They have demanded that I develop myself and it has brought me everything really. Yeah, I think I think this book is is one of those, you know, like our favorite books are the ones that you every year you go back or like your favorite TV show you yeah. go back and rewatch and you're like, oh, I totally <laughs> missed this last right. time. So I think your chart is that. Yeah, your chart is yeah. that. And I think this book gives you like a tangible way to return to that yeah. over time and rather so than just like, it's so pretty. <laughs> it's kind of classic. I don't know if it goes on the, um, <laughs> it just changes all the time. I so, love this cover so much. I'm this is what Daniel in California Hi, wants Daniel. to know, and I'm going to kind of Please. help, because yeah. Daniel's asking you a question that I know everyone is asking you right oh. now, which is, what the hell is happening in this country and world right now? Yeah. So what I want to ask you, just so that you don't have to answer that question, <laughs> is, you know, I know that astrology kind of becomes a thing at different times, culturally, for different reasons. Yeah. We saw that happen in 2016 and 2017. Yeah. So in 2020, as yeah. you're kind of out there a little more, as you're signing this book, yeah. what do you think people are like looking for in astrology? You know, like what, where is astrology coming to play in what's happening in this culture that you're getting this question a lot, you know? I think we, we know with beyond a shadow of a doubt that we're living in a very defining time. Mm -hmm. And the astrology of 2020 is just that. It's incredibly defining. There is a 200 year cycle ending and another one beginning at the end of the year. It's Jupiter and Saturn making a conjunction and a new element in Aquarius and an air sign. And- <laughs> My rising. <laughs> oh, Sorry, <wow>. keep going. <laughs> it's, a huge, it's a huge year for you. Um, okay. Uh, um. But I think we need to know that. We need to know that there's 
a context for the incredible chaos and destruction and devastation that we're witnessing so much of now. And we live in an inc- we live in a time where we are fed the chaos of the powers that be all day long. Mm-hmm. And I don't think we we like not that other leaders weren't as, you know, chaotic or what have you. But we're fed everything. We're just alarmed all day long. And so our systems are totally overwhelmed. And we feel incredibly powerless, I think, in the face of so much brutality and the face of, you know, people threatening war, looming uh, destruction that I feel like we need as much as possible to have places where we can have some reflection and some Mm -hmm. something that helps our parasympathetic nervous system you know and astrology gives us that and also the this year this year's astrology is like we just have to be all in like this is this is the year that's going to define us personally and collectively and so no matter what anyone else does no matter what any Buddy in power does. I think we have to always be working in any way possible to reorient ourselves towards our personal power, mm-hmm. towards our collective power, towards the power of being connected to each other and caring for each other and being of service to each other as much as possible. Because they want us to remain isolated and afraid and, and divided. And so um, in all the ways possible, it's so important to be in community and in it, in relationship. Love that. <laughs> <laughs> Easy like that. So uh, last question yeah. is from Erica in Oakland, California. Erica. Erica. You did, this is a good one. Um, when did you know you were born for this? <laughs> I know. Yeah, let's give kind of an abridged. But Erica, um, touche. <laughs> Erica? I, I, I don't know. I don't. Like, it's a very, there's a, well, there, in one way, I think when I started working with, I write about this in the book a bit, when I started to work with Demetra George, um, who's my teacher and a master astrologer that everyone should know about, um, and she started to work with me in this traditional astrological context, and I really understood the power of the ruler of my ascendant which is in the third house of writing and communication and ritual and it's the temple of the moon and it really helped to give me that affirmation and it helped to give me permission Mm. to write and it was that little piece of I was already writing at the time I was already writing horoscopes but I wasn't I was like I think this is something I think this is important I think that this is valuable but I didn't really have that kind of deeper confirmation. And when, she, when we went through my chart for the first time together and, and we explored that piece of it, it was, it was permission for me. And then I allowed more of it. And the more I allowed of it, the more came through it. And I just didn't really look back. So that's, that moment is one of the reasons why I wrote the book because before that I just struggled so much in my career I struggled so much in terms of wanting to find a place for myself in the world Mm -hmm. and I really felt like such a failure you know I just felt like I was in my 30s and I still hadn't you know wasn't able to like make enough money to pay rent fully and it was like I was so up and down and all over the place and I felt like I had a purpose and I felt like I had talent, but I just had, I was like, where do I put this? Where do I put this? Where do I put this? And when Demetra gave me that, um, I really was like, okay, I'll do it. And it's what really helped me unlock everything. And then shortly after, like a month after I met the woman who would be my wife and everything (laughs) changed. (laughs) And here we are. And here we are. Honestly, literally, that's how it went. That's how fast it went. Yeah. 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 So um, if you have been watching and you'd like to get your own signed copy, I highly recommend you go to premiercollectibles.com slash born for this. I assume there's yeah links up and down. Um, and please follow Channy Nicholas at Channy Nicholas. 
And be sure to get your copy. Come to a live event if it's not sold out already. They're all sold out. Uh, oh, they're all sold out. <laughs> yes. um, and thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much. Are we done? Yeah, we're at time. Bed. Wow, that was quick. <laughs> thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for getting a copy. I'll definitely have more events in the year. And so I will see you somewhere on the road. Bye-bye. Thank Bye. you.